Greetings, my friends. We have waited long for this moment. With impatience, anger, confusion, we have wondered what the voices inside mean. Who is it that calls to us in these moments of doubt? And in time, we will become the possessed. Okay hey everyone, so this is going to be the Possessed Marine that we're painting for today's tutorial. I chose this one because he has a variety of interesting surfaces and different kind of uh, textures and variation in what's going on here. We've got some nice metallics, some big flat armor panels, some horns, and lots of organic areas as well. So it's going to be pretty fun, we're going to start with the white armor that's coming up next. Okay, so for the white armor what we're going to start is a base coat of uh, Corax White and Bane Blade Brown. So basically what we're going to do is just do a quick pass over the armor that we're going to have white and it's going to take us probably two layers to work this up to the point that we want it. Now some of you who are familiar with how I paint 30k war leaders will notice that uh, We've changed up the recipe slightly. Normally I would start with a Bane Blade Brown base coat, but as I've kind of um, learned some new techniques, I've realized that we actually don't need that Bane Blade Brown base coat anymore when we're going to be doing things like oil blending, because that can kind of do the job uh, much quicker at a later step. So we're actually starting with a stronger white base coat which will speed up the process overall and there will be less layers of paint as well which means there's less detail that's getting obscured. So simply put we are going to put this base coat down and come back once that's all in. So that's coming up next. Okay so we have our base coat put down. What we're going to do now is work on a layer for this white armor. For this layer we are using a blend the previous base coat so we're still using our Bane Blade Brown and Corax White but what we are doing now is we've mixed some more Corax White in so it's about 70% Corax White at this point and all we're doing is going back over that armor covering pretty much most of the armor here we're gonna leave a little bit out from the furthest areas the most shadowed but we don't need to be too careful here really and basically what we're going to do after this is build up a few successive layers working a little bit more Corax White in. So we'll probably do a layer where it's about 90% Corax White. And then for the final layer what we're going to do is mix in just a touch of White Scar and brighten up those highest points in the armor. So it's pretty standard, just a successive build up of White Tones. Nothing too dramatic at this point because we don't really need to worry about creating too many effects. Just working with very simple stuff. So I'm going to pencil those in off camera because um, it won't be particularly interesting to watch. We'll come back then for the next step. Okay, so we have our whites put down now. So this is basically a blend up of the whites that I mentioned in the previous step and kind of the finished result that we're getting after that. We're going to do a little bit more work later on in the tutorial on making these whites a little bit more interesting but for now it's like he's washed his power armor in Daz and he's gotten his whites white. So we're putting down the blue base coat now and what this base coat is is a 50-50 mix of Cantor blue and Stegodon scale green and essentially we're doing a very similar process as we did with the white armor in that we will gradually mix in brighter blues and blend up from those areas of shadow. So for the shoulder pad we're going to be blending from the bottom up to the top. 
So the bottom will have the darkest parts of the paint, and then the top is going to have the brightest paints, the brightest mixes. So it's a very simple process. Uh, it's not really anything too complicated. We don't want to like spend ages on the shoulder pads because there's lots of other really interesting parts of this model and the eye is definitely not going to be drawn to them. So we're just going to get this base coat laid down for the shoulder pads and uh, then we're going to come back for the next step. Alright, so we've put down that base coat of blue on the shoulder pads. We've worked a little bit of Calador Sky into our base coat mix now. And we're just going to start brightening up those shoulder pads a little bit to make them pop. So we're going to leave some of the base coat down towards the bottom of the shoulder pads, but we're pretty much going to cover this whole area. And we're going to pull the paint up so that we're moving away from the shadow with it. And basically what we're going to do is work a little bit more Kalidor Sky into our mix, progressively. And get to a point that we're happy with, with these shoulder pads. So it'll probably take two or three more layers of just progressively lightening this mix. And then we'll kind of be happy leaving them where they are for now. So I'm going to do those off camera, and we're going to take a look at what he's going to be like after that. That's coming up next. Okay, so we have worked up our blues now. We've got this nice vibrant blue towards the edge of the shoulder pads. We're adding some sponge chipping now. It's a mix of Rhinox Hide and Chaos Black. And we're taking a little bit of sponge to apply this. Now, we're not going to go too heavy on the chips for this guy because there's a lot of different things going on with this model. So we don't want to overdo it. So we're just going to lightly pencil in some chipping on this guy with the sponge. Maybe we'll do a little bit up here, but nothing very dramatic. Mainly because there's so many different interesting surfaces happening with these possessed that we don't want to overdo it with our chips. And one thing I would say, we'll work on it in, in the next step, is uh, any of these areas where there's like a lot of cracked shoulder pad or like armor segments, We'll focus some chips on there with a brush because those are areas where naturally as the armor has these organic components bursting out of it there's going to be a little bit more chipping so we're going to come back with a brush add some scratch marks and then add some focus chipping on those cracked areas that's going to be coming up next so taking our brush now and using that same mix for the chipping we're just going to really dial it in on these um, armor segments up here that have this bone protruding out of it. So we're just kind of doing an erratic um, edge highlight along this broken armor segment, just to really represent that when these uh, protrusions are bursting out, that the armor is being chipped and flaked away as well. It's just helping to add a little bit of a sense of realism to the model and subtly focus the chipping in areas that seem natural. So that's pretty much it for the chipping at this point. We might add a couple of little um, scratch marks as well, but we're keeping it very subtle like I was saying. So we're going to be moving on to the trim and the metallic parts, that's going to be coming up next. Okay, so um, we have the chipping put down now, and it's very subtle and light what we've done here. But there's going to be an awful lot of effects going on, so we're keeping it to a minimum for this. Now I know we said we'd be doing the metallics next, but um, I lied because I somehow managed to forget that this guy has... A load of organic components which is actually what we're going to be doing next it's more important to do that first so what we're doing is we're starting with a base coat of galvor back red all over the organic areas which there's quite a lot of now any kind of horns and chitinous areas we are going to leave for now because we're going to do those bone colored probably or maybe black i haven't really decided yet 
You guys are really very much seeing uh, me trying to paint a model that I have little to no idea what I'm doing with. And it's a journey of exploration and creative confusion as I stumble my way through this possess kit and decide what I want to do. However, I have decided that for the organics, we are going to go with a reddish purple for pretty much all of it. Now, I know a lot of people would consider going for flesh tones, which is a possibility and not something that I'm saying is wrong to do. However, um, when it comes to the 30K color scheme, the red and white, one of the important things is that we don't, or the blue and white, sorry. One of the important things is that we don't um, have too many similar colors going on that would kind of like lose all these really cool transitions between the organics and the power armor. So if we do a flesh colored um, organic area, it will kind of blend a little bit too much with the white armor and it will be a bit harder to distinguish. So these kind of purplish red organic tones that we're going for will look very demonic, first of all. And secondly, will really be quite distinct from the white power armor. Now, if we were to do the um, 40k color scheme, the red and brass, I would definitely be doing flesh tones for that. And part of me definitely wants to pick up a box of these guys and paint it in the 40k color scheme. So if that is something that you folks might be interested in, you can let me know down below because I'm sure I can probably rattle something up for that as well. But for now, what we're going to do is get this base coat laid down and see where we're going after that. It's going to take quite a while to work up these organic tones, so it'll be a little bit of an adventure. Tune in for that next. Okay, so we've gotten our base coat of Galvor Back Red put down, and we've made up a mix of Screamer Pink and Galvor Back Red. And what we're going to do now is start working that into the skin tones. Now we're going to leave a little bit of base coat in the shadowed areas, but not very much of it at this point. We're going to be pretty much coating the majority of these organic areas with this mix. And this is basically how we're going to gradually build up to the organic kind of tone that we're going for here. So next up, it's going to be probably just a straight up layer of Screamer Pink. And then we're going to start mixing in some Pink Horror and some other tones as well. It's a slow process but it will give a really nice final effect and it'll be worth it. But this is definitely going to be the longest part when you're uh, painting these guys. However, it's really important to get these organics correct as they're the, the main draw for the possessed models. So getting that put down correctly is key to really selling how good these models are going to be. So we're going to put down this layer and uh, I'll probably do the straight Screamer Pink layer as well. And then we'll come back for the next blend up, so that's coming up next. Alrighty, so we've built up our uh, layers of Screamer Pink and what we've done now is mixed in some Pink Horror with that Screamer Pink. And we're going to start working on some striations here. So basically we're taking our brush and we're kind of moving in vertical lines towards where the musculature is kind of pulling. So you want to kind of do that to just build up a gradation of tone and some little bit of texture. It'll become more elaborate as we work further layers in. But right now it's pretty subtle because our blend is quite close to what the layer that we previously put down. We're just kind of getting a, an idea of where we're going. So moving in these vertical lines quite rapidly. So what we're going to do is basically do that over all these organic parts. And you always want to pull towards areas of tension if possible. So there's quite a lot of tension up here where this horn is coming out and down here towards the jaws. In terms of actual like muscle, like this area here, I'll probably go like striations down like this. Just moving down like that. We're gonna stay away from the shadowed areas as well, of course. So what we're going to do is several gradual layers of this and we're going to work in a little bit more pink horror into each successive layer until we've got quite a bright one built up. 
So I'm going to work on that and we'll come back when it, that's all done, see what it's looking like, and then look at our next steps. Okay, so we have basically continuously worked up that pink horror layer. We've gotten to this point now with the organics. So what I've done is that I've worked some pallid witch flesh into that pink horror. And we're really going for the higher points now on this model. So we're still kind of working with that striation pattern. And we're using that to kind of pick out the areas where we want to enunciate the higher points of this flesh. It's still not really a skin tone. It's still very, very pink. And we're not going to take it too much further than this. For now, anyway. Because, like I said, we don't want it getting too white. So it doesn't mar with the armor. Well, we have managed to work in some really interesting textures. And some interesting kind of focal points. That we can kind of, at the minute, you can see the blend isn't really perfect. But what we can do is we can, once this is all washed out and cleaned up. We can come back with an oil blend, which we will be doing, and really make this pop out quite nicely. But we have a very clear direction of where we're going with this now. And probably what we're going to do is work a couple more layers in. Just very gradually building up that pallid witch flesh, working with less and less of the area. Just trying to get some high points done. And once we have that done, we're pretty much there with the flesh. For the time being. So I'm going to get those done and then we're going to come back for the metallics for real this time. Okay so we have finished putting down the flesh tones and this is kind of where we're at right now. So we've gone for quite a bright higher point but not so bright that it's really a skin tone. What we're going to do now is start laying down the foundation for the brass parts of the armor. So we're starting with a base coat of Jet Exhaust Burnt Iron, which we're going to put down all over the trim. We're going to gradually work in brighter brass tones on this as we move up to getting a goldy brass kind of color to border and highlight all the armor. So we're going to cover the trim with this base coat and then we're going to come back for the next layer. It's coming up next. Okay, so we have our uh, Jet Exhaust Burnt Iron base coat laid down for the bronze. What we've done is we've mixed a little bit of Rune Lord Brass in with that Jet Exhaust Burnt Iron. We're going to go back and lay down a layer now over this armor trim. And you can see this is going to brighten up the area somewhat and start to kind of lay down that main brassy armor that we're going for here and we're going to stay out of like the deepest recesses but at this point we're just focusing on getting a solid and consistent layer put down for the armor So we're going to get this covered and then we're going to come back for the next step which is just going to be a straight up layer of Rune Lord Brass and we're going to start focusing on some higher points of this bronze armor. That's coming up next. Okay so we've put down that mixed layer now and what we're doing is we're working a layer of pure Rune Lord Brass onto these bronze sections. At this point we're really starting to brighten up the armor so we're not going to work fully over what we've done. We're going to leave some in the recesses for some shadowing as well. But you should start to see it kind of jump to life at this point. So we're basically just going to do a couple more layers. And mix in some silvers as well to really brighten it up. So we're going to do that off camera. And then we're going to come back at the finished result. Okay, so we've done our Rune Lord Brass layer. What we're doing now is just working in a kind of choppy highlight of Canoptic Alloy to really pick out that brass section. 
We want it nice and bright now, so that when we come in with the oil washes and stuff, that it doesn't dull it down too much later. So again, like I said, it's a pretty choppy highlight, not really an edge highlight at all. We're just going over the kind of raised areas and areas that are catching the most light on this bronze. So like the top of this shoulder pad here, just going to kind of pencil some in. Just to make some of that lighting pop out nicely. So he's starting to come to life at this point. What we're going to be doing next is working on the silver metallic parts, so like the chains and chainmail and stuff like that. So that's going to be coming up next. Okay, so here is where we are after that lovely little highlight of canoptic alloy. What we're going to be doing next is adding our base coat for the silvers. So here we are using gunmetal from Ammo Mig. It's a lovely dark little silver. And we're just going to be putting this in very simply over all our silver metallic areas. Now these areas are going to be really interesting once we get to the weathering step because, especially on this guy, we've got some lovely chains and chain mail, which tend to take to weathering particularly well. So we aren't going to spend too much time on them right now. We don't need to make them look amazing. We're more setting up a canvas for future effects that we're going to be working on this. You can kind of see that we're getting the palette isn't overly complex, right? We have a couple of key areas that we're after picking out with these base coat steps, these acrylic steps. And what we're going to do is once we get to the grim dark parts, we're going to really enunciate each of these areas in a different way. So what I mean by that is for the, the white armor, we're going to have lots of pin washes and Nice little browns worked in to age that out. For the metals, we're going to have some fun little rust coming in. And then for the organics, we're going to deeply darken them. And do some lovely little oil blending just to make everything pop out. But for now, we're not going to get too ahead of ourselves. We're going to focus on putting down this base coat. And after that, basically what I'm going to do is add a couple of layers of gradually brightening silver paints to make it pop. So we're going to tune in for that. It's coming up next. Okay, so we have that initial um, base coat for the metallics put down now. We're going to hit it with a layer of polished metal from Ammo Make. Pretty generic layer here. We're just kind of going back over our initial surface. We're going pretty light and fast so we can leave some of that initial darker metal tone in those recesses. But again, we really don't need to focus too much on detail here because we're going to be pulling a lot of that out later. Very different weathering effects. So just kind of hitting it with a light pass here. And once this is done, we're going to follow up with a steel highlight from Ammo Make. We're basically going to be doing exactly the same thing, but working a little bit further down moving away from the shadows towards the light source, as we always do. It's real simple stuff, just getting this done. And once that's done, we're going to move on to doing all these organic bone textures, which are going to be really fun. So that's going to be coming up next. Okay, so we've put down our silver coat now, and we're going to start base coating out the bone components of this possessed guy. So we're starting with a base coat layer of rhinoxide, and we're just going to do this all over the bone. Now what we're going to do after this is gradually build up a higher color to get it to where we want by blending in various different brown colors until we eventually get to something that we're happy with. For now though, we're just going to base coat this out. 
and then we're going to come back with the first of our mixes. So that is coming up next. Okay, so now that we have our base coat brown laid down, we're going to put down a layer of Tandia bark. So for this, we're basically working through all the bone areas, but we're going to leave a little bit just at the end, so creating those shadows there. There won't really be much of a difference at this point between Tandia bark and Rhinox eyes, but we're just laying down a layer for the kind of layers to come, building up very gradually to get a natural transition for the bone. Basically, we're going to repeat this process over several different tones. Next up is going to be Mournfang Brown, and we're going to gradually work our way up. So that's coming up next. Okay, so we're just touching back in on these bone effects. Now, I've done a, a gradation layer of Mournfang Brown, and then one of Scrag Brown as well. Right now, what we're doing is working in a mix of Scrag Brown and XV88. This is really where we're going to start to see some pretty interesting transition come into play. And where we're actually starting to work towards an actual bone colour. So eventually this is going to work towards a Zandri dust. And then eventually in a Shabti bone layer. But as you can see, we're working pretty high up on these bone areas now. And by the time we get to those Zandri dust and the Shabti bone layers, we're going to be working with very little of the surface area, which will give a really, really nice blend and variation in tone from the tip of the horn right down to the base. It's going to be especially nice on these helmet horns, which are pretty extra, to be honest, but I'm here for it. Um, gives the option to do some really fun little blends. You can kind of see on the talons here as well, we're getting some of that worked up and it's real nice. But we're basically just working over him, getting these put down. So I'm going to tune back in once we have those Zandri Doss and the Shabdi bone layers. So just to kind of, you know, it's, it's just the gradual, gradual process of building up these layers to make sure that we're getting a really nice transition and really selling that effect. So it takes time, but all good things take time. So just have patience with it, build up those layers, let nice things happen. So we're going to tune in once we have the last of those put down. It's going to be up next. Okay, so we have put down all the bone, uh, working right up to that Ashabti bone layer. And at this point, we are more or less finished up with our acrylics, at least for the time being. So this is kind of where he's looking at right now. We have a lot of interesting ideas going on here, a lot of cool tones and a good balance of colour. What we're going to be doing next is giving this guy a coat of varnish and then we're going to start working on the oil washes to really make this guy look nice and grim dark. So we're going to varnish him, give him about a day to dry and then we're going to come back for the oil washes. It's coming up next. Okay, so we have varnished our possessed here. And we're going to hit it with an oil wash now. So for this oil wash, we're going with um, our standard kind of Van Dyke brown and lamp black wash over the armor, the metals, and basically all those kind of components. But for the organics, for the mutated parts of this model, we're actually going to go with a mix of deep pink and cobalt violet hue as a separate oil wash, just because that uh, that initial oil wash isn't really going to look as good on the organic parts, so we're going to make up a separate mix for those. It, you don't really have to be like too careful about making sure that the washes don't blend into each other. It's really not like such a big deal, but we're just trying to marry the colors a little bit better with the wash that we're pairing with them. That's all. So we're going to put those down, we're going to let it cure for a couple of hours, probably about four or five hours, and then we're going to come back with our Q-tips to take it all off. So that's going to be coming up next. Okay, so we're going to start taking off the oil wash now. Uh, this is pretty standard if you've seen any of my oil wash videos before. We're just going to be taking a Q-tip here soaked in mineral spirits and going back over the model using the reductive technique to pull away a lot of that wash and bring out that armor again.
So we're probably going to do a couple of passes of this just to make sure that we have as much off as we want and we'll probably go in with a brush as well just to focus on those finer parts and make sure we're editing the wash nicely. But it is nothing too complicated, same stuff we've always done before. So I'm going to get that done and then we're going to come back for some weathering. It's coming up next. Alright, so we're going to start applying some weathering now to this guy. We're going to start with a pin wash of track rust from Ammo Meg. Now this is going to be very similar to any of the pin washes I've done before in any of the other videos. Basically just going to let capillary action do most of the work here. Apply some of this track rust around the rims of the armor. What we're going to do is we're going to clean that up with mineral spirits in just a sec and edit it so that uh, it kind of looks the way that we want it to. It's going to go on a little bit choppy. Once that's done, we're going to add some streaking grime. We're going to add some streaking rust as well. All the usual good stuff in pretty much the same way, just creating some pin washes. So you folks won't need to see that one on camera because it's basically going to be repeating this process and uh, just editing us then with the mineral spirits. So for now we're just penciling in that wash. So once I have those pin washes put down, we're going to come back for the next step. Okay, so after all our weathering has cured out and we've added our little pin washes and streaking effects and stuff, this is kind of where we're at with Mr. Possessed here. And he's looking pretty good. I think we're happy with the weathering where it's standing right now. We're not going to really add too much more to it. What we're going to be doing next is moving on to the oil blending to kind of add a lot of shadows and volume to these different surfaces. So we'll be oil blending on the armor and we'll be oil blending on the organic textures as well. So if you haven't already, you should probably watch my oil blending video before stepping into this because uh, I kind of break it down in more detail there. But we are going to work through it here on some of the various armor segments and then we'll tune back in as well for the organic parts as well. So that's going to be coming up next. Okay, so we're going to start the oil blending. Now I've taken um, some Van Dyke, Van Dyke Brown oil paint and using our applicator brush, we're going to put a little dot of it just down here by the base of the, the armor. And then taking our feathering brush, what we're going to do is start working that oil paint out. And working it up from the area of shadow. So we're just gradually blending this out and getting a nice fade going on here. And we're going to work it pretty hard so that it blends nicely in with those white armor panels, creating a strong shadow towards the bottom of this armor here. And we're basically going to be repeating this process over the other armor panels, just creating this really nice shadow at the bottom of the armor and making sure it's all nicely blended. We'll probably do a double pass on this just to really reinforce those dark areas towards the bottom. But it's nothing too complicated and like I said, if you aren't familiar with the technique, I have a tutorial already put together on exactly how to get this done. So you can find that on the red path as well. We kind of dive into the theory a little bit more in that. But it's a really nice and kind of relaxing process that generates effects quickly and easily. You can already see it's, it's created quite a nice shadow towards the bottom here. So we're going to do that over all the armor panels, then we're going to come back once we are actually doing the uh, organic parts as well, because that's going to look really fun. That's coming up next. Okay, so we've done our oil blend all over the armor panels. You can see we've created a lot of fun and interesting shading going on here. We're going to start applying this to the organics now. So we're going to start with Cobalt's Violet. We're going to add this to the deeper shades of the organic parts, like we'll say just down here for an example. And in the same way, we're basically going to blend this out. Now we're starting with what will be one of our darker tones here. We're going to work in some other um, oil blends into these organic areas in different areas like uh, deep pink and some purples and violets, that kind of sort of stuff. 
and we'll add some really interesting shading and kind of tone and texture I guess to these organic parts and you can be a little bit more free with the blend here there's uh, more room to work with and just do stuff that find you find interesting kind of work with the shadows that we've already laid down in that wash and generate some interesting ideas like that. So we're going to work over the whole model, working through these organic parts and generate some interesting effects. We're going to, like I said, do a couple of different oil paints just to vary it up a little bit, get some, some interesting stuff going. So once that's all done, we're going to come back and see what the results looks like. Okay, so we finished up our blending and we've also added some highlights back over the metallic areas as well as penciling in. A couple of little acrylic details like the flames on the back and this fun little eye on his knee pad and shoulder. What we're going to be moving on to now is the dreaded OSL. So I'm not going to record everything that we're doing here because it's quite difficult to record OSL but also it's kind of a repetitive process of glazes and stuff. But we're going to lay down um, an acrylic layer of Baharoth blue first of all, just in by the eye lenses. Now, what we're basically doing here is putting down a very bright color at the start. And what we're gonna do is work some glazes and washes over this to tone it down a little bit and add the glow area around the eye lens. So you can kind of see we're just putting it in there and we're gonna do the same with the flames on the backpack too. I'm going to add some Baharal blue to that and some highlights around the area as well. So basically what's going to happen next is we're going to apply a wash of Drakenhof Nightshade and then we're going to pick three medium layer blue planes getting slightly brighter each time and glaze them over the area getting progressively closer towards the light source each time. Now I'm not going to record that because it's a little bit boring but once all that's done we're going to go back with our Baharoth blue and just touch highlight those eye lenses again to bring that uh, kind of source back out for the lighting. So we're going to tune in once we have that done and take a look at the results. It's coming up next. Okay so after our OSL this is pretty much where we are at with the Possess and I think we're about done with them. So we did a lot of fun techniques today on this guy. It's nothing really that I haven't covered before in any other videos, but it was really interesting to work with all these different surfaces and see how we could bring them all together into something interesting, fun, and yeah, just, just a little bit different from, from our normal Chaos Space Marines. Um, but this is pretty much him. We're gonna base him up now and put him in the light box, take some nice photos, get a group pic of the gang all together. So let's wrap this video up for now, folks, and we'll summarize it that's coming up next. <laughs>